What's going on, YouTube? We are back with, I can't believe it, the final episode of Grand Fiesta Americana Coral Beach Reviews, Episode 4. We are talking about Isla Mujeres. So, Isla Mujeres is the island that's staying at the Grand Fiesta Americana Coral Beach. You can see across the water. It's about 7 kilometers long from a local who told me while I was on the island. So, we're going to cover that island today, the things we saw when we went over there, things you want to do while you're over there or before you get there. We'll go through all those tips as well because there's a couple um, that we ran into and didn't realize before we got there. So if you're interested in that, we will get into that right after the bumper. In this episode, we're going to talk about Isla Mujeres and what we experienced there, how to get over there, all that kind of stuff. So let's get into it. Uh, if you need to get away from the resort for a day, my suggestion is to go to this island. Um, so, how do you get there? How do you get back? So, pro tip right off the front. We got free tickets through the resort. So, it was interesting. I, I thought two of the people we went with, they were, they, were, they were working out some other details for our excursion early in the week when we got there and they said, hey, Go ask this guy, how do we get over to the island? So I went over to, so in the first video, I showed you where you can um, go to get your excursions in the tiny kiosk in the corner. If you're looking at the kiosk right to your right, there's like a little like set in desk area. I don't know exactly what it was for. It might've been like resort based things. But anyway, there was a person there I stand, standing there and I asked them, hey, how do I get tickets over to uh, the island? Uh, from here because uh, when you're at the actual resort you can actually see they have a like a catamaran motorized boat that is a ferry that runs back and forth uh, to the island and the pickup station uh, where we got picked up is actually right next to the resort so you can actually see the dock at all times and you can see the boat coming in and out at, at all times so that's really cool but we'll get into some details of pickup and drop offs and all that because it's it's a little all over the place and it takes a lot to kind of wrap your head around. So you can get free tickets to the resort. I think the stipulation is you get free tickets based on how long you stay. We were there for eight days, seven nights. We were allowed to get the tickets. So what we did is I just walked up to the front desk. There's a big TV uh, right underneath that. There's people who are standing there to help you out. And I said, I'd like uh, two tickets to get over to the island. And they said, you know, how many people, how many people are there? How many people are staying in your room? I said two. So as long, they will give you the number of tickets based on the people staying in your room. So uh, my daughter and her friend had their own room. I asked to get their tickets as well. They would not give them to me. So you have to have a representative from the person staying in your room to get those tickets. So you can't get free tickets. I think it's based on how many nights. They didn't clarify that. Uh, one, I didn't really ask because I was just super pumped that we were getting tickets and it seemed kind of hush-hush based on uh, the information I got from the guy. So certainly go ask. They may tell you no. They may tell you yes. Just realize it is an option and you can check that out. Um, so the ferry pickup and drop-off, like I said, is right next to the resort. Um, there are actually four pickup and drop-off locations uh, throughout like the strip of Cancun, like along the water. So realize that that's not the only pickup and drop offs. And what I mean by that, like the times of the day and where the ferry goes is, you know, you have to be cognizant of that. So they have a little like card that they'll hand you that'll show the pickup times of the locations at the front desk when you get your tickets. So realize that if you wanna get back to exactly where you got picked up, which is right next to the resort, there is only three times that the ferry will bring you back to that exact location. So it's not all day, it's not whenever you want, it's not every time the ferry says it's coming back towards Cancun, because it's only three, and then I think it's, I think it's three times for each drop off, so you know, 12 obviously. Uh, 12 drop-offs and um, but realize that that it's not as easy as just like oh I'll just pick up a I'll pick up a time at like two because that fits what I want to do on the island I think the drop-off back to our spot was 10 45 a.m. 12 45 p.m. and then 6 p.m. so that gap between 12 45 and 6 is big and if you're planning on trying to get back for an earlier dinner or whatever else 
realize that 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 may not be a possibility. But I'll get into what we did and kind of how we got back to a time frame that we wanted to. Um, okay, I had 10, 30, 12, 45, and 6. That, that, those are the times to get back to the drop-off right next to the Grand Fiesta Americana Core Beach. Um, okay, got that. So, on the island transportation, um, it's all about golf carts. Um, so, pro tip, which we didn't know, um, I actually, I heard about the golf courts, but I didn't hear about how to get them. I didn't dive enough into that before we left. So we got over there. It was kind of a cluster F when we got off the ferry. Like everybody like floods the first street. And then the first place everybody goes is the first golf cart rental. And the line was ridiculous. And the person's like, ride a golf cart, blah, 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 blah. So pro tip. Before you go, you can call over and make reservations to a multitude of golf cart rental places uh, on the island so that your name's on the list, you'll have a golf cart waiting for you, you just have to show up to that place and, uh, and, and grab your cart, obviously, as the line moves. Um, if you don't, or if you can't, or if you just don't want to, whatever you do, don't stop at the first street. So as soon as you get off the island, go beyond the first street because there's, there's golf cart rentals on the multiple streets as you're moving away from the ferry. So just keep going past the, the first main street. That's where everybody's going to huddle up. Move on beyond that. Uh, check your phone or uh, keep walking you know, through the streets and you'll find another golf cart rental because there's plenty and just go that route. Don't, don't get stuck and get, get locked in on the first street. Um, Golf carts you can get from one. Okay, so also the reason you want the golf carts is because you can literally go from one end of the island to the other, which is exactly what we did, and we'll get into more of those details. Another thing with the golf cart, we got lucky because we were standing at the first rental place, like a bunch of tourists, and this guy came up to me and said, you're looking for a golf cart. Uh, once again, you guys can probably hear my dog. Um, if you're looking for a golf cart, I said, yeah, and then we were kind of going back and forth. We ended up having to give him money. And he called a place that was right up the street and said, do you have golf carts? Kind of got us an in. I get it's kind of like an island scam, but we were desperate. That's what happens when you don't plan. Shame on me. Um, it, was a, it, it was a bit of a mess, but we ended up getting our three golf carts and that fit our whole 14, because all 14 of us went over to the island. So I realized plan, call over, make a reservation for the day you're going and you'll be way better off than we were when we started. So. That's your tip. Okay, so first thing we did, when you get on the island, um, the far west side of the island, so if you're looking at the island from Cancun, Cancun's behind you all the way to the left. That is, that is called Beach Playa El Cocal. I could be butchering and I apologize, but uh, west side of the island, it is the best beach I have ever seen. So I've always been, you know, my wife and I always try to find the bluest water, just like, you know, a lot of people do. This was unbelievable. Obviously, I'll put pictures. It was incredible water, incredible sand. Um, it was beautiful and a great temperature. There was all these boats docked, not docked, anchored off uh, probably 50 to 100 yards off the sand. Enough that you can, and that the water's calm enough and shallow enough, you could literally walk like, right out to the boats. Obviously, you wouldn't because it was somebody's, somebody's on the boat, but you could hear them playing music. The whole thing was like so surreal with the beauty of what was going on. Um, it was just, it, it was incredible. So I, I highly recommend going all the way to the left once you get your golf cart. You know, just keep going left until you run into the beach. It'll be, it'll be well worth it. It was, it was so beautiful. Uh, there are chairs and umbrellas that sit on the beach, uh, on that same, uh, the Playa Beach. But uh, they're all rentals, so you'd have to get a hold of somebody. So don't just like crash down. If you see an open umbrella or an open chair, they'll come out and tell you like you can't do that unless you rent them. I think they were twenty bucks for the day. Um, there were, like I said, the boats anchored off the shore. There is a restaurant where we came in, like the main street that goes right to the beach. Um, there is a restaurant that sits right there. So if you're close enough there, or you get there and you didn't really bring snacks or a cooler or anything like that, because most people don't really bring coolers with them. Obviously, if they're flying. Um, but you can get drinks and stuff right there. A server will come out to the beach and ask if you want anything. They'll give you a menu that's, um, what do they call that? Oh my gosh, I can't think of the word. Anyway, it doesn't get wet and, and all messed up. Anyway, they'll have all that. You can, 
you can get drinks and food and there's uh, vendors walking up and down the beach that are selling like uh, fresh fruit and drinks and ice creams and stuff like that. It was just, it was a really, really cool experience. Uh, I think we were there for definitely a couple of hours just hanging out in the water, hanging out in the sand. Um, it was really, really neat. And um, yeah, so it was, it was great. And on that side, on the west side of the island, as you're going, there's tons of shops, tons of little restaurants, tons of little like, you know, stands for food and drinks and selling things and trinkets. You can leave your golf cart there. Everybody just parks their golf carts along the side of the road and then you just kind of walk around. So a uh, really cool, really busy, really beachy island vibe at that end. It was, it was really neat. Um, pro tip, it's a no fly zone for drones. So it was, <laughs> I was so pumped at where we were and I was so excited to get some drone shots to be able to share them obviously on my channel. And then got everything out of my bag, you know, got everything hooked up, put the blades on because I take everything off to get it in its little compartment and then went to link it up with, you know, the GPS to my RC controller. And then it's like no fly zone. It wouldn't connect uh, to my drone. And it was just, you know, it was giving me based on the GPS signal. They must have a night, no fly zone uh, over that beach, which really sucked because it would have been absolutely beautiful to fly the, fly the drone. But realize you can't fly drone. So heads up there. Okay, so after we spent a good amount of time on the beach, um, I was actually, right when we got there, I talked to a local guy who was kind of telling me uh, about the area, things that were in the area, and he said, you know, I mentioned, I actually looked on Google Maps before we went there that morning, and I was just looking at local landmarks and things like that you can do, and I noticed there was this area, which was like a, like a park area that was called Punta Sur. Um, and I was looking at some of the images that were tagged in Google from people who were there, and it looked it looked incredible. It was like rock faces, you know, the water splashing up, blue water, it looked like a pathway, blah, blah, blah. It looked like a bunch of really cool things. So I was like, okay, I definitely want to hit that up. So I asked the guy about it. I said, where is that? And he says, it's all the way on the other side of the island. So all seven kilometers to the other direction, the far east as you can go, is where this place is at Punta Sur. So, well, like I said, seven kilometers, it will spread across the entire island. But the cool thing is you can, I think it took us probably 40 minutes to get over there. Probably something close to that, about 40 minutes to get across the island. So you got to get through town and you get on the main road and it gets like a lot more sparse where it's just houses and residential. And you're not stop and go and, you know, you can buzz, you can keep the hammer down on the golf cart because obviously they govern, they uh, put governors on those and you can run that way for a good 25, 30 minutes. Uh, so it's not like you're, it's constant traffic. It's, it's a pretty easy drive and you'll see some of that um, in some of the video. Um, Punta Sur, so a couple pro tips here. Uh, you have to travel across the island. You wanna travel across the island on the north side. So if the Playa El Cocal is behind you and you're leaving it, you wanna to stay to the left side of the island. So the north side of the island because one, you have way better views of the water and the houses on that side are absolutely incredible. So all the beach houses seem to really, the, the mansions seem to say on the north side of the island, uh, kind of facing where the water views are better, which, you know, obviously makes sense. So stay to the north side. Um, a heads up when you get there, the walking path to get to the edge of the island that takes you kind of down by the water is three dollars per person i didn't do this and i regret it so much so i would say absolutely do it because uh two of our party members ended up doing it i didn't do it because i was kind of running around while we were there i was uh looking at things there's like shops and things like that around there we were going to get some smoothies because there's also smoothies there just doing a bunch of things didn't know that they they went over there and head down they said it was like the most incredible thing they've ever seen so Unfortunately, I don't have any footage of that. I apologize. I would tell you to go to Google Maps and look at the photos that are tagged by other people along that ledge as they're walking around it. It's pretty beautiful. I'm sure there's other YouTubers that have um, have uh, pictures of it and, foot and footage, but they said it's well worth it. It's definitely worth the $3. Um, so it was so good that those two people went, they did it, and they went back three days later or two days later to the island and did it again. So do it if you have if you do uh go please let me know what you liked about it what you loved about it and even share some photos or whatever um and another thing is there's not a whole lot of parking when you get there so we got there i think about noon or 12 30 and when we were leaving around like two ish it was getting super packed 
and there's only like a tiny little parking lot. So there was golf carts everywhere. And there was even, you know, locals who have tiny cars on the island. They were, it was, the whole place was filled up. It, it was nuts. So if you're going to try to go, it seemed like the lunch to early afternoon uh, was pretty busy when we were there. Uh, another pro tip, <laughs> use the bathroom before you go to Punta Sur. The reason that is, is they make you pay to use the restrooms. So I thought that was... I mean, pretty salty. Uh, it wasn't obviously a lot, um, but it, it's pretty weak in mind. It's like I get it. It's a you know, it's a it's a tourist spot. You you have some of that stuff when you go to tourist spots, especially on islands, because you know there's minimal ways to make money because you are you know secluded to a specific space. Just realize you have to pay for restroom. So if you're gonna wait to go there, you're gonna have to pay something. And um, from our experience, it didn't have change. You know, so if you have larger bills in the U.S., like you're going to be paying way more than what they're asking for, or you have to buy something from a shop and then get change in pesos and then pay to go to the bathroom. So it was a it was a bit of a mess. So really, you have to do that. Also, um, the party, the two individuals that were in our party that actually did the path, the walking path, when they went back the second time a couple of days later, they said a guy was flying his drone. So not the whole island is in a no-fly zone. I didn't fly my drone there because I figured the whole island was a no-fly zone. Shame on me. Boo. Sad face. Um, so you can fly your drone over Punta Sur because there was a guy that was like right along the edge and buzzing around. They said it was really awesome and I got really upset. So I let you guys down twice. Um... Other cool thing is there was iguanas everywhere. So you'll see lots of iguanas. They're just sunbathing. Their mouths are open. It's pretty funny. I think I have a couple, uh, some footage of that. Once again, there, there's gift shops. There's food. Actually, the food options are kind of cool. There's a bar there that's kind of like right along, right along the edge before you go on the path. There's lots of little small shops with lots of drinks. There's little like, uh, you know, like hot dog carts full of stuff like churros and things like that. And they do have like a smoothie bar which was pretty neat. I wouldn't think that they'd have at the end of the, at the end of an island, a uh, pretty sophisticated smoothie bar. So lots of cool stuff uh, at Punta Sur, but realize you're gonna have to pay for everything. Um, so a little bit of a tourist trap there, but um, I have footage of driving back from Punta Sur back to take the golf carts back um, before we ended up leaving. So uh, realize that those are the two major things we did. We didn't do a whole lot of shopping in town uh, because we wanted to get to those two major landmarks uh, before we head back. So when we when we went back uh, at the ferry kind of station where you you know you uh, you get in line to get your tickets or whatever else we had tickets. So the tickets you get from the hotel, from the resort are both ways. They're round trip for everybody. So you have to make sure you keep your ticket. Um, and realize once again the return. If we so we returned on the four thirty boat uh, because we didn't want to wait till six p.m. Uh, so to do that, we had to return to a stop farther down the strip. Cause remember, uh, Grand Fiesta Americana is like at the very, very far East end of the Cancun strip. We were somewhere, we were two stops, or it was our stop, another stop. And then we were one farther down the, uh, the Cancun strip. So we took that back cause it was at four 30. We got back an hour and a half earlier. And then what we did is there's tons of cabs waiting there. Once you get off the ferry. We jumped in a cab. It took 12, 15 minutes to get back to our hotel. They dropped us off. We, we, you know, we paid for the taxi and we were back in our, uh, back at the resort. So if realize that you can get back really at any of the, a lot of times, but you may not, you may not end back up right next to the resort. You'll have to take a taxi or a cab back to the resort, uh, which should be, you know, they're only the four stops are kind of right along the strip. They're not that far apart, but realize it won't be right next to your resort. You won't be walking back to the resort. Um, yeah, so the only the only other thing I have is realize that in the, the, the ferry station, it's a little crowded. It's a little bit of a mess. Uh, and each of, so each of the areas, like one, two, three, four drop-off stations have different areas to load on the ferry. So for instance, we came in on the the, the drop-offs or the pickup station that was right next to our resort that kind of, that would have loaded in the middle of the station where we left was all the way to the far left of the station. So there's almost like four terminals like at an airport. So don't just think you're gonna be in, because our party was kind of congregated around the middle terminal, which like, you know, you have that zigzag, zigzags back and forth just to keep people in line when they're getting ready. Um, 
the the ferry left with the people before us from that terminal. But when I went and asked the people at the ticket counter, they said, you'll be at, you know, you're going to be at gate alpha A. And that was all the way to the left. So I'm glad I asked because we would have been standing there waiting for people to line up and then nobody would have been there. We could have possibly missed the 430. So realize there's four terminals in the ferry. Don't get confused. Make sure you ask a bunch of questions. They have a map there that it'll show you each of the four stops along the Cancun Strip. And they'll be, I'm pretty sure they're A, B, C, D. And then that's how the gates are categorized in the station of the ferry. So don't get confused by that. It took me like a couple questions with a couple different people to kind of figure out how the whole thing worked. It's a little confusing, but uh, main takeaways, get off the main street when you get there, reserve your golf cart, go all the way left to the beach, go all the way right to Punta Sur and everything in between. Uh, they have lots of cool stuff. They have, a, they have a microbrewery over there. They have lots of shopping and food. It was just a really great experience. I think we were there from around 10.30, 10.40 till... 4.30 when we got on the boat to come back, and it was excellent. I highly recommend that. 10 out of 10 for me. Anything that went wrong on uh, Isla Mujeres was down to our poor planning, and everybody was super friendly on that, so I highly recommend it. Um, that's it. That's the last review video for Grand Fiesta Americana Coral Beach. Thank you, everybody, for the comments so far. Thank you, everybody, for the likes so far on the first three videos. This is the last one, and uh, we had on vacation. My puppy's licking my leg. We head on vacation in September again, and I'll be doing a review video down there. Um, so I'll have some other content, I'm sure, in between, but we will catch you on the next one. Thanks.